Hey guys, welcome to Extreme IE. In this video, we're obviously going to be taking a look at getting a simulator like GNS3 actually up and running so that we can either lab for work or that we can we can use it to study. I always get this question whenever I'm teaching a class or you know folks write in after watching some of my videos and they say, what do you use in these videos? What do you use to demo your stuff on? And of course the answer is GNS3. I'm a big GNS3 fan. It's the simulator I've used from my CCNA through my CCMP up to my CCIE. And, you know, you don't have to use GNS3. There's there's a couple of different options. Let me actually just head over to the whiteboard real quick. There's a couple of different options of things you can use. The very first option is, of course, real gear. Okay? You can go out and you can buy yourself a couple of, uh, of old 2600 routers and, maybe, you know, maybe some 2960s or 3560s. Uh, I have a pair of 3750s in a stack here at home uh, with another set of 3560s. I have probably... Uh, a dozen 2600 routers, some 2900 routers. I mean, I have a, a ton of stuff. But the problem with doing real gear is that it, of course, costs money. And, you know, when you're doing your CCNA, not really a big deal. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, a couple of routers, uh, you know, a couple of switches. It's not the end of the world. But as you go to your CCMP, you've got to grow that rack, right? You have to actually add hardware to it. And that can, again, become costly. And then you go to your CCIE, and I mean, if you look at the cost of some of these CCIE racks out there, I mean, you're talking sometimes, you know, in the, in the $1,500 and up range, right? And for some folks, that's perfectly fine. Some people don't mind that amount of gear living in their basement. I, on the other hand, my wife would kill me, and so I don't, you know, I don't want to have that kind of kind of stuff sitting around my house. I mean, I have plenty of stuff as it is where you walk in my office and you 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 have to kind of step over and, and walk over the maze, right? So. The other thing that we can use is a virtual simulator or, or something that's going to actually contain these, these hardware-based images so that we can actually run them on our, on our desktops or laptops. And we have a couple of different options. One of the options we have is called UNL or Unified Networking Labs, and I think this guy is actually going to be upgraded or I should say migrated to what we call EVE. Now, this guy is entirely free, so you don't need to buy anything. You can just sign up on their website. You can Google them. You can go out, download their... Um, Download their image and you would put this on some type of, of virtualized hypervisor like VMware, ESXi, something like that. Uh, and it's web-based, which is cool. So you really don't need a client to, to install. You basically just, once it's up and running, you'll go to the web page and manage your network topologies. So this guy's kind of cool. Again, free, which of course we like. The other one, the other simulator we have is Viral. Now, of course, this belongs to Cisco, meaning uh, this is Cisco's baby. It's Cisco proprietary. You have to actually go out and buy this. It does cost money. I think the student license is something like 79 bucks or something like that. Don't quote me on this. This is a, a question here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you can buy a full-blown version, like a 30-node license for like $300 or something like that, which I think I actually did. So I do own this as we as we go to uh, as we go to some later videos with GNS3. I'll, I'll, I will show you how to get some of these viral instances or images um, installed into GNS3. Uh, we also have CML, which is Cisco Modeling Labs. Again, this is also Cisco proprietary, and I know you guys just want to see how to install uh, GNS3, but I'm going through your different options for you here. And and this guy is all web-based again, so you would basically go to uh, Cisco's website, and you would log in, you would uh, purchase some rack time with CML, and then you would create these virtualized apologies. The last one, of course, is the one you actually came to Watch how to install, and that's GNS3. This guy is my simulator of choice. Again, I've used it for my CCNA, all the way up to my NP, to my IE. I've used this entirely throughout all of my studies, and really, it's never failed me. Yeah, there's been some tweaks. Yeah, there's been some things that I've had to tweak and, and go through some heartache every now and then, but for the most part, I love GNS3. That's the guy I generally use. So let's actually take a look at what we need to do just to get a basic install going with, um, with GNS3. So you'll go to their website, gns3.com. You'll need a sign-in. When you first go to it, you'll either be given an option to register or to log in. You can obviously see that I've logged in, being that I've been using them for 100 years. I already have a login. Now, I do not have GNS3 installed on this machine, so this is going to be a fresh download, uh, a fresh install. So you'll want to go to this download button here, and you'll see that it gives you an option here to download the latest version, which is 152. Now, they did just come out with a version 2.0, but I think it's in beta uh, at the time of this recording. You can download some older versions if you want to, right? So it says to download this version, 1.3.13, you can click here. I'm going to click on this download button, and it gives us a, it gives us a couple of options. So I'm a Windows user. I'm going to need to do this. You guys that are Mac users or Linux users, maybe watching this video will help, and you'll have to figure it out from there. 
What I don't want you to miss though is this. We're going to come back to this a little bit later on when we actually, in some other videos, when we look at downloading and installing the GNS3 VM. But for the most part here, I don't want you to miss this. Just, just keep an eye on it for later on. What we need to do is just download this option right here. Now, I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to go ahead and waste your time watching me to do that. I just wanted to show you uh, that that's essentially where it's, where it's downloaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my downloads folder. I don't want to show you that. Uh, because I don't want you to see what I have in Windows Explorer. And I'm just going to click on the GNS3 VM, uh, the, the GNS3 installer. You can see that it comes up. So let's actually go through this. So we'll say next, uh, just basically general license information. We'll say I agree, ask us where we want to put it. Very easy install. Now, for me, I generally leave most of this checked. The only things that I do not check are Super Putty because I have my own, um, I have my own, version of uh, Secure CRT and Putty that I run. I uncheck Wireshark because I generally uh, install that on my own and I keep it updated on my own. So, you know, you can install it if you don't, if you want to install Wireshark along with GNS3, you can certainly do that. I just choose not to. Uh, and then I uncheck SolarWinds Response. So everything else I generally leave checked just as is. We're going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to ask us, hey, where do you want to put this? We'll obviously leave it as the default. We'll say Next. Now it's going to bark at us. And it's going to say, hey, you know, um, you already have this installed. That's because I did have GNS3 installed previously on this machine. So um, I uninstalled it just for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, not really a big deal for me to reinstall it. Probably going to give me an error message because it's running. Uh, but I just leave everything checked. I don't really generally, um, I don't really mess with it too much. I just leave it to do its thing. Uh, it's not very hard to install. It's not really rocket science. We can generally get this installed and, and up and running with an image pretty quick. So let's see what happens here. But we'll say next. Um, I'm going to say no, I don't want my free license, although you can. It's entirely up to you. We'll say next. And I'm going to uncheck to start GNS3 and I'll say finish. Brings me to GNS3's website and, uh, and just basically says, hey, thank you for installing. Here are some additional links. I'll go ahead and close that. Now, one of the things that you're going to need as you mess around with GNS3 is you're going to need a login to Cisco's website. And you can see I actually have it up here in the background. And you're going to need to find the proper... Um, the proper image of what you're going to want to run. So I just picked a random one here. This is a 7200 router. Uh, you're going to need to find whatever image you're going to want to run if you're going to run them locally on your machine. So let me head over to my start menu here. Just give me one quick second and we'll go ahead and we'll open up GNS3. Let me get it over here to the right screen. Just give me one second. When you first open up GNS3, this is the screen that you're going to be greeted with. And if you're going to run GNS3 inside of a VM, in other words, if you're going to run the GNS3 VM, if you're going to run a local server, you would you would go ahead and you would go through these options. For now, I'm just going to click cancel and I'm going to bring the GNS3 window in here. Okay, so this is GNS3 in its raw state. Okay, this is how it would generally look. Now, I don't have any images running yet in here, so let's go ahead and let's actually take a look at what we need to do to get an image running. So I'm going to go ahead and say edit preferences. And I'm going to go down to these iOS routers, okay? Generally speaking, if you're going to run GNS3 local, right now that's exactly what we're doing. We're running this local on our machine. We're not going to run in a VM. We're not going to use IOU on, on Linux. We're not going to use uh, any virtual box images or anything like that. We're just going to run a general local image. So I'm going to click iOS routers. And, and these are, this is all the, the default for Dynamips. We're not going to change anything in here. We don't really need to. I'm going to say new. And you can see here that I already have an image for this local router, okay? So I don't need to do anything right here, but for you guys, you would select new image, you would say browse, and you would point it to either... Um, the bin file that you downloaded, so if you, if you went to Cisco's website and you downloaded, you know, this bin file here to a specific router, this is basically what you would point it to. Now, the reason why mine says image is because it's gone ahead and uncompressed it for me. Okay, so not a big deal that mine says image, not the end of the world. Okay, it's just that's GNS3's way when you, when you, actually, in, um, when you actually import that bin file, it's going to ask you, hey, do you want me to, to uncompress this for you? If you say yes, it'll make it an image file. So it's not, not a, really a big deal. So we'll say next. It's going to ask me some questions about my 7200. Now, by the way, 
let me just move this over a little bit and give myself some uh, some some whiteboard space. Um, you can run a number of different devices. You can run a 2600. Uh, you can run a 3700. I think it's actually a 3745, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can run a number of different types of devices uh, in GNS3. I generally like the 7200. From my again, from my CCNA all the way up to my IE, I generally used the 7200. The 7200 gave me everything that I needed. Uh, it gave me some gigabit interfaces. Gave me some Ethernet interfaces. Uh, it gave me uh, um, serial interfaces. It, it gave me the ability to test everything. I could test PPP. I could test all these different technologies. So the 7200 is generally my particular router of choice when I'm going to use any of these images locally. So we can name it anything that we want. We'll just leave this as the default. I'm going to go ahead and say next. It asks how much RAM do we want to give it. Again, I'm just going to leave it for, for at the default for these purposes. Here is where I would go ahead and I would give this guy any particular interfaces that I'd want to give it. Now for me, I'm generally going to say, okay, let's give it some gig interfaces. Uh, let's give it uh, eight ethernet interfaces. Uh, we'll give it some serial interfaces. Uh, we'll give it uh, packet over sonnet interfaces. And you can add anything that you want to, to add here. It, it's, it's really up to you. You have six different slots. You can add as many interfaces as you'd like. This is just kind of my, uh, my particular standard. Okay, so we'll say next. The idle PC is something you can either do now or later. I'm going to show you how to do it later, but you can do it now if you'd like. We'll say finish. Now you can see here that it's gone ahead and it's given me this image here, this, this router that I can load. So I'm going to say OK. And if I click this router button here, you can see that I have a 7200 here and ready to go. So let's go ahead and move this over. And it's going to say waiting for the local server. And it's going to, it's going to show red over here in the topology summary. And you can see that it actually gives me some, some output here. It's warning me I have VMware up in the background. Ignore that. So you can see here that uh, it gives me what my current RAM usage in my CPU is. By the way, uh, on this particular desktop, uh, I have, I think, 16 gigs of RAM. Just in case you guys are wondering, I forget what the CPU is. I don't want to bring Task Manager in on here uh, so you guys see what else I'm running. But I, I, I know that I have at least 16 gigs of RAM uh, on this particular box. But I've ran a topology uh, with, I want to say, 32 devices, 32 routers, and I want to say four switches. And I've done this on a device that has 12 gigs of RAM. Okay, so it is possible to run some pretty good sized topologies in GNS3 if you have it set up correctly. In this case, when I ran this topology, I actually did use the virtual machine setup. All right, but let's get back to this for a second. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this guy. And when I start this guy, let's actually try to keep a let's keep an eye out here and see what our RAM usage. Let me let me open this up and let's bring Putty in here. So you can see that this image is actually starting up. Okay, and you can see that my RAM is is actually slowly going up. Let me actually bring in Task Manager here, and let's shrink this down, and we'll go to Performance here. And you can see that my CPU does spike, and it does go up a bit, right? I mean, right now this router is actually running, so this is all I needed to do. I can say Show. Uh, I know that the writing might be a little bit little for you guys to read, but I can say Show IP Interface Brief and type like a normal human. Uh, and you know, it gives me all my interfaces. So here's my gig interface, here's my E00 interface, here's the, uh, the eight ethernet interfaces I gave it, here's my four serial interfaces, my packet over sonnet. Uh, but you can see that my CPU now is actually uh, running at 22%. What I can do is I can go back to GNS3, I can right click on this guy, and there should be uh, an idle PC. So I can go ahead and click that, and what should happen is that GNS3 will then start to calculate some idle PC values to bring down that CPU usage. And, and this sometimes can take a minute, it can take a couple minutes, but the idea here is that as I click these different values, my CPU usage would go down. So let me actually go, we'll click this one with the asterisk here, we'll say apply, and then let's see if it dropped at all. You can see here that the minute I click apply, I went from 22%, which is where it was running here, down to seven. And it'll tell you here, it'll say, hey, look, the, the, the best idle PC settings are going to be the one with the little asterisk here. So once I click that, my CPU goes way, way down, now down to 7%, and I'm running a full-blown router. So now I can click more in here. Let me, let me actually say OK to this. 
I can click more in here, by the way, if you want to run more uh, than just one router. If you're, if you're like me, you're going to run five or six, and you don't want to continually click six routers in there. What you can do is you can hold down the shift key on your keyboard, which I'm doing right now. You can click and drag a router, and then when you let go, as holding down the shift key, when you let go of your mouse pointer, it's going to give you how many number of nodes you actually want to drag in. And you can go ahead and you can say 10, and then there you go. It gives you, you, know, it gives you 10 routers that you've now uh, dragged in. Let me scroll over this way and grab the rest of them. All right, so now I have all these different routers that are running here, and what I can do is I can go ahead and I can go ahead and start these up. Be aware that as you start these different devices, you know, and you can connect them together by clicking your uh, your network link over here. You can go ahead and start connecting these guys together, however you'd like. So you can connect them at random. You can connect uh, the same interfaces, whatever you want to do. It's entirely up to you. Whenever you click on the device, it's actually going to go ahead and give you the uh, the interface that you want to use, so you'll click that, and then when you click on the second device, it'll say, what what interface do you want me to connect to? What's really cool is that over here on the right-hand side, as you connect the devices, when you click this little arrow, it's going to go ahead and give you the actual interfaces that you've connected on that device. So if you're going to do a diagram, if you're in the middle of configuring things, it will show you exactly what you have configured. All right? Now, when you start up these devices, you're going to want to right click on them and do the idle PC. And the reason is because you want to continually tweak your idle PC to keep your, uh, your processor usage down as much as possible. But at this moment, I mean, we have basic, uh, you know, we have basic GNS3 actually up and running. If you want to change any of these settings, if you want to change your putty settings, you can go to edit and preferences. And then under your uh, your console applications, it's going to give you anything that you want. So, for example, let's say that I like a specific editor. Maybe I like Secure CRT and not Putty. I would go down here and I would say, okay, I like Secure CRT or I like TerraTerm Pro, which I do use both. Uh, you could leave it set as, as Putty, which is the, um, the version that comes with it. You can do essentially whatever you want. If you don't like the skin color that comes with Putty, for example, the, uh, the orange, you could go ahead and backspace that out, if I'm not mistaken. And if I double click on R1. Now you can see that it turns to white. Um, so, you know, and I realize again, the text is, is a little bit, um, a little bit small for you guys to see. Not too much worried about that. More worried about teaching you guys how to get your basic uh, GNS3 up and running. Now, in this particular case, you can load, if you do a 3745 router, uh, the same way that I'm showing you, you can load the EtherSwitch module. I don't have that downloaded, but you can load the EtherSwitch module to do any layer two switching. There's a much better way, and hopefully I will get to that in later videos. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed watching how to just get some basic GNS3 up and running so that you can test just some basic layer three and some basic layer two. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.